Hi guys, this is Sadek from Droidman.com and in this video, we'll show you how to route the Lineage OS 20 ROM which is based on Android 13 onto your Pixel 6, Pixel 6a and Pixel 6 Pro. So recently I made a guide and a video on how you could install this ROM onto your phones and in this video, we'll show you how to route your phone via Magisk. So let's get started. First and foremost, let me show you I'm using a Pixel 6a ROM which is based on Android 13 and these are the settings page and as you could see it's currently based on android 13 Neon OS 20 rom and my phone name as you could see it's pixel 6a if i go to about phone section it's the pixel 6a so let's now route this phone via magisk so for that your first course of action is to install the android sdk platform tools this is the official adb binary given by google and is required to execute adb commands so download it from the link given in the description and extract it onto your pc in my case i've done the extraction you could see these are the files so make sure to download and extract it onto your PC. Once you have done the extraction, you will now have to enable USB debugging so that we could execute the DB commands. So to enable debugging, go to the settings menu on your phone. From settings menu, go to about phone and tap on build number seven times. This will enable developer option. Now go back and go to system, then go to developer option and enable the toggle next to USB debugging. You will now get a prompt on your phone, tap on OK. Then you might get an RSA fingerprint prompt as well. So again, tap on allow. Let's now verify the debugging connection. So go to the platform tools folder address bar, type in CMD and hit enter. This will launch the command port window inside the platform tools folder as you could see. Now type in ADV devices and make sure that you are getting a serial ID. If you are not getting a serial ID, then unplug and replug your phone from the PC. Likewise, disable and re-enable USB debugging. Tap on revoke USB debugging and use the official USB cable and use the USB 2.0 port on your PC. So try out this USB tweaks and make sure that you are getting a serial ID. Once you are getting the serial ID, then you are good to go ahead. So next up, you will now have to get hold of the Magis APK file. So just open this link and it will take you to my Magis collection. And from this, as the time of recording, the latest version is version 25.2. So you could directly go to this version and download the file from GitHub. You could also re-verify the change log from the GitHub as well. So this is, will open the GitHub page and you could re-verify the changes or you could download it from this direct link. Once you have downloaded the Magis APK file, you will have to then transfer it two places. The first is inside the platform tools folder as you could see and the second is inside your phone. So make sure to transfer the Magis APK file in both these directories. Next up, you will have to change the Magis APK file to Magis zip inside the platform tools folder. So simply right click on it and rename the APK to zip. This will change its format to zip and it will make flashable via recovery file. So you will get a prompt, click on yes. So the magisk inside the platform tool should be changed to zip, whereas the magisk in the phone should remain in the APK format as you could see. Once you have done that, let's now move over to our next step. So the next step involves booting our phone to the recovery mode and it's the lineage OS recovery that will be booting our phone. So let's now boot our phone to recovery. For that, you have to open the CMD window inside the platform tools folder. Once you have opened that, simply type in ADB reboot recovery and your phone should now boot to the lineage OS recovery the process should only take a few seconds so let's wait while that is happening and it's now about to boot to lineage OS recovery and as you could see it's now booted to lineage OS just a minute and it will soon boot to the lineage OS recovery and let's wait while that is happening so our phone is now in the lineage OS recovery we will now have to simply sideload the magic zip file. So for that, first and foremost, go to apply update, then select apply from ADB and your phone is in the ADB sideload mode. Now just type in ADB devices and make sure you're getting the sideload message. Once you are getting this, then you're good to go ahead. And now you have to simply sideload the magic file. So regarding this, I would recommend you to rename the magic file to just the magic and remove any version number from the end as it will become easier to type in the CMD window. So make sure the name of the file is simply matches zip. So if that's well and good, now just simply sideload this file via adb sideload followed by the name of the file which is matches and the extension which is zip. So type in this command just a minute and hit enter. The sideloading of the matches file will now begin and you will get the signature verification failed. This is happening because the matches file is not a part of lineage OS recovery or the lineage OS ROM. So if you sideload any file which is not a part of lineage OS, you will get this message. Even if you sideload the GIF package, you will get this message. So it's completely normal and you just have to tap on yes. So it will now begin the sideloading process and the matches will now be installed. The process could take up to a few seconds. So let's wait while that is happening. And you could keep a track of that from the phone because on your PC, the process might get stuck at 33%. 
that is completely normal and nothing to worry about so you could keep a track of all the files from the phone and the process should take only a few more seconds and in the meantime as you could see on your cmd window it will only be stuck at 33 percent so leave it in that state as well and it's now currently unpacking the boot image and checking the ram disk status and now patching the ram disk and repacking the boot image and the process is just about to get complete so as you could see we are now getting a done message and install complete with status zero likewise in the cmd window is showing total transfer so this signifies that the process is now complete and you could now boot your phone to the os for that just tap on reboot system now do keep in mind that as of now the magisk has been installed in the backend only you might not see the magisk ui or the magisk app in the front end so we will have to install the magisk apk file as well that is the reason why we had transferred the apk file to the our phone as well in the beginning so as of now you should you might not see the magisk apk file in the front end and that's not a cause of concern likewise our phone is currently booting to the os and the first boot up might take up a few additional seconds this is because we have just flashed the magisk file and the boot up is now complete so as of now you might not see the magisk apk so that's not a cause of concern let's now install the magisk file so open the file manager app of your choice then go to your file where you place the magisk apk and simply install the apk file tap on continue and hit install it will now install the magisk apk file onto our phone once done tap on open and as you could see the app is now about to get launched so let's wait while that is happening and we could also see the magic so as of now as you could see it's asking for upgrade so from the app drawer launch magic and once you get this prompt just tap on ok so it will not download additional files and for this you have to tap on settings and enable the toggle next to magic once that is done now tap on update and magic will now update in the back end and as you could see we have now got the app so let's wait and see what's the current status so now once you launch the magisk app you will get a prompt that you require additional setup simply tap on ok and your phone will now undergo a reboot and it will take around 5 to 10 seconds while rebooting so it's now undergoing a reboot and you should not interact with your phone while it's going on so just to recall once we have with the magisk apk we then install the magisk app and after installing we open it then it asks for an update so we updated the app and after that it asks for additional setup so on the additional setup dialog box you have to type on ok and it will then install some additional files in the backend and your phone will undergo a reboot the reboot happens automatically you don't have to do the reboot on from manually and once that is done your phone should boot to the os and as before the boot up might take up a few additional seconds that's completely normal and our phone has now booted to the os and if i now launch the magisk app so let me place it here if i now launch the magisk app you could see it's currently installed and we are having the latest version and if I verify the same via root checker app, so let me now tap on verify root. So it will now bring up the super user request, tap on grant. And as you could see, our phone is now rooted on Android 13. So guys, this was all from this video on how you could root the Lineage OS 20 ROM based on Android 13 onto Pixel 6, 6 Pro and 6A. If you have any queries, do let me know in the comment section. And please like this video and subscribe to this channel for more tips and tricks. Thanks a lot for watching. Hi guys, this is Sadek from Drivin.com. And in this video, will show you how to pass the safety net on rooted Lineage OS 20 ROM based on Android 13 on Pixel 6, 6 Pro and 6A. So as of now, I'm using the latest Lineage OS 20 ROM based on Android 13 onto my Pixel 6A. As you could see from here, and currently it's rooted via Magisk. Let me show you that as well. And from the root checker app as well, you could see my phone is currently rooted via Magisk. And if I check the safety net using the Yasnak app, you could install from Play Store. So if I launch this app and tap on run safety net at a station, you could see it's failing both the basic integrity as well as CTS profile match. So our ultimate aim will be to pass both this test. So on that note, let's get started. First and foremost, you'll have to hide the Magisk app. So for that, launch the Magisk app onto your phone, then tap on the settings icon at the top right, then go to the Magisk hide and tap on hide the Magisk app. Now give it a name of your choice. In my case, I'm simply renaming it to Droidwin. You could rename it to any name of your, you could give it any name of your choice. So once you have renamed it, tap on OK. It will now hide the Magisk app. So let's wait while that is happening. And it will now ask for notification, tap on allow. It will now ask you to add a shortcut to the home screen. It's completely optional. In my case, I will do not want a shortcut. So I'll be tapping on cancel. Once that is done, you could see that the Magisk app is not there on your home screen. Rather, it's now been replaced by the name of your choice. In my case, it's been replaced by Droidwin, as you could see over here. So once you have renamed and hidden the Magisk app, 
your next course of action is to enable systemless host. So to enable the host file, go to the settings menu from the magisk, then over there, just tap on systemless host and the module will now be added. To verify the same, go back, then go to the module section. You should now see systemless host module. Once that is done, you will now have to enable Zygisk. So again, go to the Magisk menu homepage. As you could see, the Zygisk is currently showing no. So tap on the settings menu, then enable the toggle next to Zygisk and it will now ask to reboot your phone. So let's do that right away. Long press the power menu and select restart. Our phone will now reboot to the OS and it should only take a few seconds. So let's wait while that is happening. And in the meantime, let me tell you, I've also linked this guide in the video description. You could refer to this guide and check out any settings you want to verify or any steps you want to re-verify. You could always go through my guide. Anyways, the phone is now booting to the OS and this time around, it should have enabled Digest. So let's verify the same. So it's the boot animation and the first boot up could take up a few additional seconds. That is completely normal. Let's wait while that is happening. And it's currently booting to the OS and it's booted. So let me show you the status of Zygisk. So if I now launch the Magisk app, let me drag it to the home screen first. So if I now launch the Magisk app, you could see the status of Zygisk as showing is yes. So it's yes next to Zygisk and this signifies that the Zygisk has been enabled. So once that is done, you will now have to configure deny list. To configure deny list, simply tap on the settings menu of Magisk. Then enable the toggle next to enforce deny list. Once that is done, tap on configure deny list and then tap on the OFO icon at the top right and select show system apps. Once that is done, you now have to hide the root from the from the three following at Google Play Store, Google Play Service and Google Service Framework. So let's do that right away. So let's search for Google Play. So first of all, check mark Google Play Service and make sure to fill the entire blue bar. Upon if once you check mark an app, only one of the service will get enabled. So you have to tap on it again to expand the service and enable the toggle next to all this app. Once you do so, you should see that the blue bar at the top has been filled. Likewise, do the same for Google Play Store as well. So enable check mark it, then expand it and enable the toggle next to all the services. Once that is done, you next have to do so for the Google Services Framework. So let's search for Google Service Framework as well. So this is the app check market. It only has a single process. Oh, it has double process. So check mark and enable both this toggle. So make sure you have done so for Google Play Store, Google Play Service and Google Service Framework. Once you've hidden the root from that, you could now hide the root from any banking app of your choice as well. And once that is done, you will now have to flash the universal safety net checks module. So download the module from the GitHub link. The link for that has been shared in my guide. So download this module and place it onto your phone. In my case, I already have the module on my phone. So once you have the module, simply go back, again go back, again go back. Now go to the Magisk home screen. From there, go to modules, tap on install from storage, and let's select that module. So this is the module zip file, safety net zip file. So it will now be flashed. Once then, tap on reboot, and your phone will now boot to the OS. And so let's wait while that is happening. Once our phone gets booted to the OS, we'll now have to remove the data from these three apps from which we have hidden root. These are the Play Service, Play Store and Service Framework. In case of the lineage with ROM, there is no Google Play Protect service, so you have to ignore this. You only have to hide the root from the following first three apps and then remove the data of these three apps. And apart from that, the banking and payment type of your choice as well if you want. So our phone is now booting to the OS. We have just hidden the root from these three apps as I told you before and we'll now have to remove the data of these three apps. So to delete the data, you have to go to the settings menu on your phone. So on settings menu, go to apps and then see all apps, then enable the toggle next to show system. First off, let's search for play service and just a minute. So delete for play service, go there, then go to storage and cache. From there, tap on manage space, then tap on clear all data and tap OK. Likewise, you now have to do so for Google Play Store as well. So search for the Play Store app, then go to storage and cache and tap on clear storage. Then tap OK. Finally, we have the service framework app. So make sure you have enabled the show system. Then search for the service framework app. So go to the Google service framework, then tap on storage and cache, then clear storage of that app as well. Once you remove the data of all these three apps, you also have to remove the data of the banking and payment of from which you have hidden the root. So make sure to do that as well. Once you have removed all the data, you will now have to restart your phone. Yes, this restart is compulsory. You please do not skip this step. So let's now restart our phone. And this is probably the last piece of the jigsaw. Once we are rebooted our phone, we will now 
check out the result and this time around we should pass the safety net so let's wait while the phone is being booting up for checking the safety net we are using the yet another safety net attestation checker app you could download this app from play store and install it onto your phone in my case i already installed the app so let me show you the phone is currently booting to the os and it's the boot animation so let's wait for the time frame it should only take a few seconds and our phone has now booted to the os and now we are done with all the steps so let's now launch the yasnack app you could grab hold of it from play store and now tap on run safety attestation it will now perform a test and let's check out the result so guys as you could see we are passing both the safety net the basic integrity as well as hs profile match and you could now use the banking and payment app of your choice without any issues so guys on that note we round off this video if you have any queries do let me know in the comment section and please like this video and subscribe to the channel for more tips and tricks thanks a lot for watching